I've got here a Sony CPD E530 Trinitron monitor. It's a 21 inch monitor. Uh, I, it was made in 2002, but I got it uh, in second hand in 2008 to upgrade from my uh, 17 inch monitor, which was a bit worn out. And this is a really good monitor. Uh, now it conked out about a decade ago. I didn't think too much of it because I upgraded to an LCD at the time, but uh, I eventually managed to suss out the problem and it turned out to just be one pesky little capacitor. Uh, it was taking quite a while to warm up, you turn it on and um, it would take a couple of minutes for the picture to uh, appear and uh, then it eventually conked out completely and uh, it turned out it was the regulator circuit on the uh, power supply board that uh, powers the cathode ray tube's heater element. Uh, the capacitor was making the uh, regulator unstable and it wouldn't start up and uh, so it wouldn't warm the tube up. Uh, but uh, I, I fixed it and uh, I, I used it occasionally with some old computers now and again uh, but it's it's since conked out again. There was another problem with it which it had intermittently. The picture would flicker a lot almost as if there was a bad connection somewhere. Uh, I thought there might be some bad connections when I looked at it last time, but I managed to... Uh, look. I had a, a good look at the circuit board, couldn't find any dodgy solder joints or anything like that, so... But it's just completely conked out now. I am getting an error code. It's uh, flashing the power light. It's having this amber flash. That, according to the service manual, means it's uh, an issue with the B plus section. That's usually refers to uh, probably the main power supply part. But I don't, I don't know what the actual fault is. So we're just going to take it apart today and have a little look and see if there's any obvious faults. I don't think I'll be able to do any um, testing t today because these are really quite difficult to test. Uh, without the the proper equipment, so I'm really just going to take it apart and see if there's any obvious faults, and and if not, then we'll we'll just have to make do with it. Uh, but hopefully, you know, it may well be that there's a bad connection, and that taking it apart and putting it together ag again will uh, solve that because sometimes, miraculously, it does. Now, first problem with this is I've got to try to try and figure out how to take it apart, and I'm a little bit uh, short on space here, so. If we have to spin it round the back. Uh, oh, here we are. Yep. I don't know if you can quite see it on camera, but there's a screw down there. There's an equivalent screw down there. And then, if you're not familiar with how to take these apart, once you've undone that, there's some clips in these little holes. These monitors are little holes on the side. They're little clips which you use, and mine's covered in marks from screwdrivers where I've undone it before, you then have to try and unclip it and then the back panel comes right off. The stand managed to fall off, although it is uh, kept on with some uh, clips. Oh, there's the way I turn these things. And same on the other side. There's a bit of a knack for, for doing these, especially when they're so big. Then they uh, come right off. Now, this one's actually quite clean inside. There's a bit of black gunk, but uh, this one's quite clean because I gave it a thorough cleaning a few years ago. Now, if you have one of these monitors and you've not taken it apart before and it's had a lot of use, you may well find that these plastic pieces are absolutely full of black dust. And that, I think, tends to come from the high voltage. These have a very high voltage in them, and that tends to attract a lot of dust. Now, if you're wondering about the actual construction of these, uh, this front panel is a big, thick piece of plastic. The actual tube is mounted on a metal frame, which is actually screwed onto these, onto this metal, uh, onto the plastic front with some screws here. And then the rest of the monitor is actually housed in, is actually covered up by this metal cage. So. Uh, 
you're not directly exposing yourself to the uh, electronic parts by taking the plastic cover off. You've still got to take this off first. We've got to undo these screws here. Actually, conveniently, Sony do put some arrow markers on on things, so you can actually tell which parts you're supposed to unscrew, usually. Now, when it failed, the, uh, the two problems, eventually the, it just conked out and uh, gave me a flashing power light, indicating an error condition. But there was also an issue with the picture flickering, and it looked like there was an issue with uh, a bad connection of some kind. Uh, now, previously, the fault, a few years back, was uh, actually with the filament. The, the filament on the tube itself was fine. Uh, but the problem was the power supply for the filament. Uh, the uh, power supply that drives the filament was a little regulator and it had a capacitor on it to just smooth it out and stop it from uh, oscillating. Uh, that was the problem, that capacitor had gone bad and the regulator wasn't starting up properly and so the filament wasn't, start, wasn't uh, warming up and so the picture wasn't there and the CRT monitor detected an error condition and, and uh, conked out. So I'm, I'm hoping it's something as simple as that, but uh, we do actually have a, a big advantage with this monitor. Uh, I actually have a full service manual and full schematics for it, so I was able to, that's why I was able to find the problem last time. But I don't know if you can quite see it on the screen. Here, there's a little four pin connector. That connector is a little serial port, just uh, TTL levels, not, not RS-232, it's just TTL. And that uh, actually allows you to connect it to a computer using an RS-232 adapter, or possibly even a USB adapter nowadays, uh, and run some software called Windass. Now I've got a copy of that and the instructions for how to use it. Uh, that basically lets you configure the monitor, you can adjust the voltages, you can adjust the convergence, uh, the focus, or I don't know about the focus, but it's mostly useful I find for convergence. And it's, it's a really useful piece of software. You can set the monitor up precisely how it needs to be. So if there's slight issues in the screen with, you know, like maybe just the little top piece is out, is out at the wrong convergence, you can fix that in the software. So that's how we take the... Uh, shielding off. Uh, just wondering where to go from here. Uh, I've not discharged the CRT yet. It's probably okay because it's not actually been powered up for about two years. I think I'll stick a screwdriver in there and discharge it anyway. So here's the yoke of the CRT. There's a lot going on here, and I can't tell you exactly what does what, but there's also little adjustment rings. These are little magnetic rings, which you use to set the uh, set the initial convergence and things like that. Then uh, the little minor adjustments are done in software. Lots of electromagnets, because the, the convergence is not entirely set just with magnets. It's set with... Um, set with software so it has to modify the waveform uh, yeah there's I think that I was just thinking that's a magnet but that's actually a rubber bung to stop things from making contact lots of little things here I'm not actually sure what these little bits are here with the uh, glue on uh, some sort of adjustment I expect the service manual will probably tell us uh, but uh, the um, problem last time was in here. This is the power supply circuit board and your VGA interface board. You've got two VGA ports there. Uh, but most of the circuit is down here. And the problem trying to troubleshoot these sorts of monitors is that there's so much going on. I'll show you around the other side. There's so much going on in, in these things, it's very difficult to see problems. So you 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 really need a service manual. Unfortunately, I do have one. Now, in my professional engineering opinion, you should probably try and discharge the CRT. 
And uh, if you're not sure what I mean by discharge it, uh, CRT basically has, um, it's basically made of glass and on the inside there's a couple of different layers of uh, conductive material and that basically means the cathode ray tube itself is one big capacitor. And this big high voltage cable you see here that's got some extra, it's, it's red down here, got some extra white shielding on. That comes from the flyback transformer which is over here and that generates thousands of volts. In fact I think this one gets up to about 20,000 volts. So you could get an almighty zap off this if you're not careful. Now in my professional engineering opinion I don't think it's probably too dangerous if it's unplugged. As long as you don't connect it between both hands, in which case any current would fly through your heart and cause damage. Uh, the issue with the CRT monitor or any electronic device that's plugged into the mains is that your mains are earth referenced. So you only need to touch it with one hand and the current can then flow through your body into ground and then uh, that, that will cause problems uh, with your heart because that's where the current flows through. Uh, because this is not connected to ground, it's not uh, earth referenced. So as long as you don't touch it with two hands, you're probably all right. But then these things also have um, bleeder resistors in, which uh, can uh, drain the drain any excess charge out of the capacitors while it's turned off. And I think this probably does, but I don't know. So the way I'm going to do it. Well, I'm going to dis discharge it. Some people insist on using a resistor. You probably should do. Uh, but I'm just going to use... I, I don't have any proper tools. You can use proper tools. I'm just going to use an ordinary screwdriver and a crocodile clip lead. Uh, we can clip that onto the metal chassis, so there. That will do absolutely fine. And then you lift up this rubber bung. And in there, there's a little connector. I just need to basically touch that. You see, I touch that, nothing happens. Sometimes you'll get an enormous crack sound because you'll get a big arc form. We haven't here, so that's absolutely fine. I'm satisfied that there's no danger there. There may still be an issue in this main board here. There's some big capacitors there which can have some voltage on them. Uh, that uh, again, it's not particularly dangerous. The the issue is you'll you'll just get a bit of a zap over your fingers if you touch them, which can be very unpleasant. Uh, again, the, the only real problem is if it's plugged into the mains and you're working on it then. So I'm not concerned about the safety of this. Uh, there is a lot of fear mongering going on uh, about CRTs. Pe people do get very scared of them, but uh, in, you know people do get scared of electricity. When they don't know what they're doing, it's very easy to accidentally touch the wrong thing. So you do need to know what you're doing. Uh, fortunately, I do, and I am being careful. I do recommend using an isolation transformer actually if, you rec if you're working on anything like this while it's live. Uh, unfortunately I don't have one so I, I can't do that so I just have to uh, work on it when it's turned off and be extra careful when it's turned on. Right, I've not actually looked at the service manual yet so I don't quite know what I'm, whether I'm doing anything. I'm just going to take this board out. I'm just going to take this board off and see if there's anything blindingly obvious that's wrong with it. Because sometimes you get capacitors which are leaky or bulgy, sometimes you can see bad solder joints, sometimes things will be burnt out and uh, you can get really obvious problems. I'm not expecting there to be an obvious problem but sometimes they, they do occur so it's well worth having a look for. That fortunately just slides right out, in fact because that just slides out on a connector, we could quite easily have bad connections. I should probably clean them all. So this is the board which I repaired last time. This here is the little regulator. And here's the capacitor I changed. I'm going to test this again, but I don't have the circuit manual to hand. So I'm going to have to leave the video there for now and uh, go and do some research and, uh, and look it up. Um, uh, there's nothing that looks immediately wrong on this board. There's no bulging capacitors, no bad connections, no bad solder joints uh, or anything like that. So, uh, And I'm hoping there's nothing catastrophically wrong because if there is, I just can't get the parts. Alright, just for the record, got this out. I'm oh, just taking the uh, cap off there. This spade terminal needs to come off. 
there's all different, the spring. Uh, and the uh, anode cap needs to come off as well. And uh, basically try and get as many contacts as we can within a, uh, a six hour block. You can either do a six hour or a 24 hour. We normally do six, six hours. Um, Lots of connectors going all over the place up to this Another one there as well, there's one in the bottom corner. I've got other ones, there's one here as well. There's too many cables. Get in there. Oh, another one there as well. So here's the main PCB, uh, got it turned upside down so we can see the uh, connections. Now, uh, usually, I, I, well I was wondering if there might be an issue with dry joints and I've wondered that before. But usually dry joints, are, you, you can spot them a mile off if you know what you're looking for and I just can't see any on here. There were a few which I thought were a bit sus, but uh, I'm going to have to focus on too. The few which I thought were a bit sus, so I think that's actually just where I fixed them before and it was actually the uh, flux residue that I saw. I thought it was a crack but it was just flux residue. So, yeah I'm inclined to say that this board is actually okay. Um, I can't see anything that looks mechanically wrong with it so I don't, I, I don't know what if anything the problem is. Because I'm, I'm actually hold, I'm trying to move the board around. I'm flexing this capacitor around. That's one way of making them break. Uh, so now I'm going to, to turn this over. I mean, there's so much stuff on a board like this. We've got little electrolytic capacitors. We've got uh, little ceramic capacitors on the other side. We've got little uh, surface mount resistors. If one of those surface mount resistors is bad, you've absolutely no chance of finding the fault. There's gas discharge tubes, there's one of those down there somewhere. There's the flyback transformer, I do hope that doesn't fail because I probably can't replace it if it does. Um, got lots of, other, lots of other capacitors down there. Nothing actually looks broken on it, so it's it's very difficult to test to to find to figure out what might be wrong with it, and I can't really put it back. I can't really test it when it's out here like this. The only way I can test it is when it's all put back in the in the monitor and plugged in. So I'm just going to give the connectors a clean, like these ones down here. I'm just going to give those a clean, and then put it back together and turn it on and see if we can use it uh, see if we can use it and see if it works and here's the label for those who are interested it says it's a Sony Trinitron and that's the model number made in Japan that one potential issue you see this board feels rather loose Will that come out? I bet that will come out really easily. Look um, again; it's impossible to know whether that was the actual fault or not. You know, things do come loose when you're just sort of trying to get the the main boards out. You know, you took on the cables and things come loose. So I'm just going to put it back together and see if it works. What's that problem? Is there's a switch down there? I'm not sure what it's set to. It's got three positions, and I'm not sure what it was set to before I took the, took the board out. Alright, so we'll have to try and put this back now. This whole assembly is quite heavy and lots of cables dangling all over the place. So this has to try and squeeze in here. And the plastic thing has to line up with the power button. Now we've got to remember where we put all the screws. Right, I've put it all back together. I've put all the connections back. I think I've got every connector. I think I've put every connector back in the correct place. I haven't the faintest idea whether it's going to work because I haven't actually tested anything and I haven't actually repaired anything. It's got a load of 
I, I, there's nothing obviously wrong with it, so I don't know what the, the problem is. Um, there may have just been a bad connection somewhere. I don't know, but it's not been powered up for probably over a year, so I'm just going to plug... I've uh, plugged it in. I'm just going to turn it on at the mains. And I'll press the button and hopefully it won't do anything nasty. Well, the light came on. I heard a, a bit of a click what sounded like the high voltage, but it doesn't sound too healthy. So I'm not expecting much. No, then I heard a relay click and we've got back to the uh, orange flashing light. So I'm just going to show the filament coming on, so I'm just going to turn the light off. And then it clicks off, look. Now I did check in the um, manual and it does say that's to do with the B plus part. I don't know which part of the board does the, the B plus power supply. Uh, the service manual's not as handy as I thought it would be, so... I'm at a bit of a loss as to what's actually failed on here. Uh, looks like something obviously has and I, I don't know what it is. It's a really good monitor, so I'd like to get it going again. Um, nice nice quality picture, a lot better than the 17-inch uh, uh, Dell monitor that I've got. Um, I'm not going to sell it because it's too big to ship anywhere, and I'm not going to buy another Trinitron. They're, they're too big and bulky to, to carry around, so I'm just going to hang on to this one. But uh, if anyone watching this does have any ideas as to what might actually be wrong with it... Uh, I am open to ideas. Uh, I can, to an extent, test it. The problem with with these, as we've established, is it's very difficult to actually test anything while uh, while it's turned on because uh, I, I don't have any extension boards or extension cables to be able to um, test things with boards sort of individually laid out we can only test it when everything's in place and that's not not only very inaccessible for the probes it's also quite dangerous because you don't want to touch something that you shouldn't be touching so yeah i'm just gonna have to leave it for now unfortunately but hopefully in uh, due course we might find something